Ahoy Rovers! Well, inspection hatches. What are they? And what are they used for? My name's Alan Mulholland, and this is the story of how I built the Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. So in this video, I'll be installing these inspection hatches, but I can't install them until I get the crash bulkheads put in basically in the four peak and the two quarters. And I was waiting for these to arrive to make sure I get the sizes right because I still have a little bit of design work to do in those. But that's the nature of this uh, boat build being a prototype is I get to experiment with a few different uh, techniques and what I come up with then becomes a, a reasonably good template for anyone who wants to attempt a 650 or a boat like it or I'm not going to say this is the only way of doing it what I what I should say is this is this is a way of doing it and you can then look at that and you can edit it and you can say I want to try something a little bit different I see how that worked anyway a lot to do, time to crack on. Okay, so this is the this is the first area we're going to tackle. So this is the starboard quarter, and I'll have to set up a template to make a piece of plywood that will cover this space, and then I'll be placing this approximately here. So I'll have to double up the plywood underneath this to make sure we have a nice secure spot. And because this is such a big space, I'm also thinking of running just a little mini beam on the underside of the plywood to make this surface good and rigid. Uh, you might also notice that I have this piece of plywood in and in the last video I always, I, I sorry, in the last video I also put fiberglass tape around it so this is very very strong. That's a structural member that I'll be using to support the skeg once that goes in. But I have to get all that work done now before I close up this area. Anyway, let's make that template. Okay, so the first thing we want to do are just get some rough measurements so that I know what size of door skin uh, to cut. Okay, so that's 29 and 3 eighths. So I'll start with this piece. It's uh, the most challenging one, so I'll just make it so that the I can just get my pencil to sit. So we just have a tiny little bit to take off and then it should sit nice and tight against the hull. Alright, so I'm back now. It took about two minutes to plane that edge and let's see how the fit is. Okay, that's looking perfect. So we can leave that as done. And let's see. Is this in the frame? Okay. This is the piece we had cut for here. And then the back piece. Okay, nice. And the forward piece. Okay, so now all I have to do is just glue these up with the hot glue gun. There we go. Okay, good. 
And then the last thing we need to do is just put a bit of a brace across just to keep everything from going wonky. Uh, I'll just glue that in place. And then it will be safe to remove our pattern. Take it out to a piece of plywood and uh, cut ourselves a blank to fit in this space. Well, I've, I've already laid out the port side and I'm just doing the starboard side now. Uh, I can use the same template for both because they're practically identical. Now, I'm using, I'm using construction grade, as you can see, select exterior plywood. It's 3 8 just like the rest of the ply, but it's not marine grade. And that's okay because it's inside. Now, even though it says select, you can see there are knot holes that haven't been filled. The other side actually is, is quite nice. And because I'll be cutting this with a skill saw, and the skill saw tends to rip on the upward stroke. Um, that's why I have the bad side up. But um, I can fill these with epoxy and then the whole thing gets treated with S1. So this is going to be just fine. It was just so uh, expedient to be able to go to the hardware store and just pick this up as, a, as opposed to having marine ply shipped in for this, which again, I don't think I actually need. If I had it, if I had extra, I would use it. Anyway, um, you've seen me do this a few times. I just lined the template up and then it's just a matter of tracing it out. Okay, so we're done with our template now and I'll just mark this as well. So this is the uh, starboard side. Okay, let's, uh, let's do a test fit. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so the next step is to figure out where to put this inspection hatch. So, I think I'm going to favor this corner, and what's going through my mind is, when it's open, I want to be able to stick my hand all the way through so I'll have to come through this opening stick my hand through uh, to inspect the very bottom lower edge which is along here so I think that's a pretty good compromise and the other so I'll I'll cut a hole here, but before I do that, I'll double up this ply on the underside, making sure it doesn't get in the way of our um, supports, but it's going to give uh, enough um, holding power then for the screws. And then the second thing I have to figure out is somewhere approximately here, I'll put a little beam across, probably a one by two, and that's just to keep this ply, because it's such a wide, um, a wide fetch, if you will, that if, if a force is applied to the hull there, um, there will be a certain amount of flexing of this ply. Perhaps, you know, it will be secured here and here with fiberglass tape and a fillet, and of course to the underside, but um, yeah, uh, it, it doesn't cost me very much time or effort to put that beam in, so I'll put it you know, an approximate position across here. And that'll just keep this ply, it'll make it almost impossible for it to flex under normal loads. All right, uh, time to crack on with that. All right, so this is the underside of the crash bulkhead and this is the doubler piece that I'll be putting on and this inspection hatch of course will be on the other side so I'm going to glue this on with tight bond so I need to screw it in place to hold it down and let the glue set up and if I put my screws all on the um, where the circle is going to be cut out then I, I won't have any problems so 
It may not be the same for all these hatches, but if you want to know the size of the hole, you should um, probably just check the lid, and the lid itself is eight and a half inches from the outside to the outside, which gives me a clearance of about a thirty-second of an inch for this to slide for this to slide right in. So now to find the center of this, just pull a couple of diagonal lines and where they intersect that is the center. And then the next thing I want to do is just measure this and it works out to eight and a half inches. So I can measure four and a quarter. And that gives me four little points that should be at four and a quarter that should be the radius of this lid so we can put this upside down match it up to all those little tick marks I just made and then make ourselves a circle well we can safely put screws inside this circle uh, to help hold it down. I can probably get a few clamps along here and along here. I may just put a couple of screws into these corners and maybe one in the center there just to hold this down better. Alright, second thing we're doing is we're putting this little mini beam across here and so it's designed to fit so that it leaves three quarters of an inch on this edge so that this can rest on the ledger and then but this once it's glued in place and I'll be screwing from the top side and this that's going to add tremendous strength to this what is basically 3 8 uh, ply. All right time to get on with the gluing. So again we're looking at the top side of the starboard crash bulkhead and I've just marked out exactly where this beam will go and then I've marked where I want the fastener so I'm just going to pre-drill those. Okay good, so we've, I've pre-drilled those with a countersink and now I need to uh, just make that hole a little bit bigger for the number 10s. Great. Now just to make this easier, I'll start the screws on the other side. All right. safe to turn it over. And the reason I've countersunk these, those heads will get filled when this whole surface is uh, gets epoxied. So there it is, it's looking, uh, yeah, you can see it just really makes it rigid. Okay, so next step is to get a few fasteners into this piece. And let's see. Okay, good. So I can just put... I have to be careful because 3 8 and 3 8 adds up to 3 quarters and my screws are 3 quarters of an inch so that's why I'm very I want to keep them inside the circle area that'll get cut out because there's a good chance they'll go right through the second layer. 
brakes. Make sure that the screws sit well. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but the tips of the screws did in fact come through. But that's fine because this is getting cut right out, so you won't even see those. And I've decided that I'll do the actual glue up inside the boat because it's not warm enough out here for the glue to set off. And by doing it there, I've got, I'll put some lead weights on top of this and that'll compress the edges uh, as much as I need. All right. Next step, the glue up. Okay, so we're inside the womb right now because the temperature is is uh, about 10 degrees in here and that's good enough to do this glue up. So um, I'm just using this container. This isn't the actual glue, this is Type On 3. So. Well, at this point, you've seen me make these templates several times. And this is the last one I have to make for the uh, bulkheads, for the crash bulkheads. I've already pre-cut these, so they should fit nicely. Okay, good. So it's just a matter of getting the hot glue gun and getting on with gluing these up. Okay, let's do a test fit before we go any further. Wow. That looks really good. Yeah, we'll, we're happy with that. Okay, so the next step is to figure out where to put this. And so we have, let's see, let's mark it up. About three quarters of an inch out, we have the cleat that's holding this up. And then we want probably an inch to, yeah, probably whatever that is. It's about an inch and a half. And then we can have our circle. Kind of like that. Okay, so we'll have to make a ring that will go around here so that we can get the screws to bite into it. And then beyond that, let's see, I made that, that was an inch and three quarters. So about the same up here, inch and three quarters. So the ring will go around that much bigger and that'll that'll just be glued on and then forward of that but not much 
I want to have a beam. Oh yeah, we can do that. Okay. Let me just see if I can square that off. Okay, so we can have our beam somewhere located right here. Great. Well, I guess we could have it here. Maybe that would be more powerful. Yeah, because it's to keep these sides uh, out, or another way of looking at it is it's to keep this plywood from um, deflecting upward. So uh, the doubler will do that. The the uh, fillets and the glass will also do it and also the glue along the cleats so yeah we'll we'll put it in this section so we're in there all right time to take this back out and figure out the next bit okay so we want to make a ring that's about two inches uh, wide and we want the outside diameter to be 12 inches so what I've done is I've just taken a scrap piece of wood and I've drilled a hole here and four inches out, which will give us an eight inch diameter uh, ring, and then a 12 inches, uh, actually six inches, which will give us a 12 inch ring. So let's just get this pinned in place. I'll show you what I mean. That'll spin around neatly. Then just use a pencil, put it in the hole. And the second one. we need to do now is take our jigsaw and cut out that ring. Okay, so it's been cut now. Now I, I didn't do an accurate cut on the inside because after this is glued on, then we'll be cutting it back to the exact size we need. But the outside is quite accurate and it'll look something like this. So there'll be plenty of plywood left to screw into.
Well, the plywood ended up having a bit of a warp to it, so I had to change gears and take the weights off and put clamps on. Luckily, I caught that pretty quickly. So it's going to rest like this. It only needs to be clamped about, well, they say 30 minutes, but we'll give it an hour. And then I've got heat on right here, so that's just going to help a whole lot in um, setting this glue up. Okay, so these were glued up yesterday. The glue is totally set. Now I'm just going to cut out this circle and test fit our inspection hatch. Okay, time for a test. Nice, very nice, very little movement. We're talking probably less than an eighth of an inch. Perfect. Okay, actually what will it look like you might ask? Well, it should look like this. I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, two weeks ago, I initiated the very first Wave Rover contest where you had to vote on which episode you thought was best from season one. That was the sailing episode. And many of you dug into the archives and took a look at them and you felt that episode five was the winner. So the, uh, the winners are going to receive a set of plans to build their very own Mark III wind vane. And the winners are... Louis Ortuno, Adrian Smythe, and XS Chipper. Now, what you have to do is contact me via email, and you'll find that on the Wave Rover channel page under the heading About. So that's on the Wave Rover channel page under the heading About. Send me an email, and then I'll forward you the plans. Thank you, everybody who participated. Well, Rovers, the three crash bulkheads are now complete and they've been fitted and the bunk tops are fitted. So in the next video, I'll be sealing those compartments because they'll just be too hard to get to once these are permanently installed. So once they're sealed, the void spaces and the areas below the bunks, then I'll be installing the crash bulkheads and bunks permanently. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>